every newborn needs to sleep from 15 to 18 hours per day, which tells us that sleep is very important for their natural development. And the sleeping environment partially decides whether babies will sleep well or not. You probably think a crib in a separate room is the best choice for your baby's sleep. But you know what? A lot of infants in the US have passed away due to crib-related deaths. That's why parents in this country have recently argued about the safety of cribs, and some of them switched over to co-sleeping. So, should you let your baby sleep in cribs? If not, what is the ideal sleep environment for them? Let's figure it out on today's video. Around 50% of newborns, mostly in eastern countries, co-sleep with their parents, whereas most newborns in western countries sleep in a crib in a separate room. This difference drives us to controversy, where everybody thinks they are right. Parents in western countries believed that a crib was the safest place for infants to sleep in, until the infamous baby crib recall happened in the US a few months ago. Statistics show that, among American babies, there are over a thousand deaths related to crib malfunctions or mishaps every year, and 100 deaths as a result of unsafe sleeping environments. So what are the potential risks of crib sleeping? A lot of babies sleep on inclined sleepers with more than a 10 degree recline. What parents might not know is that these sleepers can easily make babies roll into a tummy down position, which can lead to suffocation. More than 5 million inclined sleepers from Fisher Price, a popular American brand, have recently been recalled due to the deaths of over 30 infants. This is so alarming that the Consumer Product Safety Commission strongly warned parents against using that kind of crib. In fact, more than half of infants in the US are still sleeping in unsafe conditions in cribs containing blankets, pillows, and toys, which are also reasons causing suffocation. In addition, another common mistake is using soft and loose bedding for babies' cribs. 83.5% of young American moms do so. This is shown to significantly raise the risk of Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, or SIDS. Also, crib sleeping not only increases the danger of laceration when fingers become trapped in folding drop gates, but it also makes it hard for parents to take care of their babies during the night as well. Now, the question is, is co-sleeping good for infants? The truth is, co-sleeping has its own problems. Co-sleeping is associated with an increased risk of SIDS. A recent study shows that, out of 8,000 babies that passed away without any reason, there were 74% of babies co-sleeping with their parents. While co-sleeping, a scary thing called toe tourniquet can happen to babies. It is where a strand of hair becomes wrapped around a finger or toe and gets tighter and tighter as the baby wriggles, eventually cutting off blood supply. Besides, always having a parent around at bedtime can become a strong sleep onset association for kids. They end up always needing some external factors before falling asleep, like being held, rocked, or nursed, which is a hassle for sleep training and the family daily routine. Co-sleeping also makes six-month-old babies wake up through the night more frequently, and a third of these babies will still do this over and over again till they are 18 months old. In addition, babies may choke if parents get too close to them and, by chance, put pressure on their body while sleeping. Also, bed sharing may affect the self-reliance of babies and somehow disrupt the mom and dad's relationship. From what we've researched so far, the best place for babies sleep is in a crib in the parents' room. The American Academy of Pediatrics now says babies should sleep in their parents' room for the first six months 
or better yet, until their first birthday. This creates a perfect environment which balances the benefits of crib sleeping and co-sleeping, as well as reduces the risks of the two. It also helps parents take care of children better. Let's follow the following safety tips when buying a baby crib. The crib should be manufactured after June 28, 2011, when the new federal safety standards were put into place. A soda can should not be able to pass between any of the slots of the crib. Bolts and screws, which secure crib components, should not be loose or missing. The crib is free of protruding rivets, joints, and the parts fit tightly. The wood is smooth and free of splinters. There is no cracked or peeling paint, and all painted surfaces are lead free. Parents should especially avoid drop side cribs. They do not meet mandatory standards. Overall, it's your own decision to choose a proper sleep environment for your newborns. But please bear in mind that more and more infants face tons of unforeseen risks due to unsafe sleep environments. So, make sure you've got a safe crib to take loving care of your babies. Now, we know you might be worried about what you've been listening to so far, but please try not to worry. Raising a child requires lots of efforts and patience. But if you try to follow our guidelines carefully, you'll definitely make it.